Hi everyone, I'm Corey Van Landingham and I teach here in the creative writing um, program and English department. Um, first of all, I just have a brief little echo of some thank yous, um, but first of all to Tim Dean, who with the Benson professorship made the ninth letter ekphrastic um, contest possible in the first place. Um, he's such a wonderful champion of poetry and of interdisciplinary conversations as we're all witness to today. Um, thank you to Jody Stanley, the editor of Ninth Letter, um, and of course to Katie Henningsen for creating these fantastic broadsides which are in the back of the room. Um, I want to make sure that all of the uh, presenters, the panelists, and the introducers know to pick one of those up, one of each. Um, and Tim has some rubber bands because they are quite large, these broadsides you can see, so you can hopefully roll them up to put them in your suitcases to take them home. Um, and Caden has very smartly designed these as the um, various co colors of the handkerchiefs mentioned in each of the poems that won this contest. Um, so thank you too to Ali Sugar for designing and typesetting the poems um, and to Bob Markley for helping make the broadsides possible too. Uh, and then of course to Hal Fisher um, for letting Ninth Letter reprint some of your work um, in the upcoming contest issue and of course for the artwork uh, that inspired these enthusiastic, engaging responses from poets across the country and, and beyond. Uh, the winning poem was from a poet from Canada and she couldn't travel here today, but we're lucky enough to get the honorable mention winning poet Jacques J. Rancourt, um, who is here with us. Um, and the contest judge, Eduardo C. Corral, chose Jeanette Lyne's poem 1979 as the winner and Jacques J. Rancourt's poem Crossed Signals as honorable mention. And both of these poems respond to Hal Fisher's signifiers for a male response from the 1977 series Gay Semiotics. Um, I think it's really kind of perfect what Jeannie said about the profound stakes of misreading that we will hear in Jacques' poem Crossed Signals in a moment. Um, and I don't want to explicate the poem or go on too long, um, but I did want to mention that there's something really delightful and right about having Jacques here today as part of his project as a poet is navigating the privilege and the burden of living in San Francisco now in the wake of the AIDS crisis. And so responding to Hal Fisher's work of art um, before AIDS uh, seems like this really wonderful extension of the moment. Um, his intricately woven poems are both haunted by and freed from the past, learning new languages of sexuality, mortality, and spirituality in order to write ethically and beautifully today. Um, if you enjoy this poem, and I feel I don't even need the conditional there, um, you'll want to get your hands on his latest collection of poems, Brock and Spectre, which was published in September. Jacques J. Rancourt is the author of Brock and Spectre, published by Alice James Books, Novena by Pleiades Press, and the chapbook In the Time of Prep from Beloit Poetry Journal. A recipient of a Wallace Stegner Fellowship from Stanford University, his poems have appeared in Agni, Boston Review, Kenyon Review, and Virginia Quarterly Review. Raised in Maine, he now lives in San Francisco. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce Jacques J. Rancourt. Thanks so much, Corey, for the introduction. Thanks for Tim for having me, and Hal, of course. It's so great to meet you. Um, yeah, as, as Corey mentioned, this poem is in response to uh, the Gay Semiotics series um, and thinking about the ways in which um, uh, communicating through signifiers and how, um, as, as Terry, you were mentioning, and Jao as well, how um, these signifiers can mean absolutely nothing um, or sometimes can be misinterpreted by another community that uses the same, semi uh, same signifiers, uh, which is what this poem sort of narratively is anchored by. Uh, this poem also, in the last line, makes reference to an Anne Sexton poem called The Truth of Dead No. In her line, it is, it is June and I am tired of being brave. So this is cross signals. I wanted to pass for unapologetic. I didn't know how. I wanted to pass for a version of myself who wouldn't hide. Not the ashamed apostle, 
but the bound saint, glanced through, arrowed by a feathered gaze, who at the public stall, when a leather shoe tapped out a language I wasn't yet fluent in, did not drift my attention back to the urinal cake steadily dissolving under my stream. Who in a city with crosswalks painted rainbow, when locking eyes with a stranger, was not always the first to break. Into my right back pocket once I stuffed a red bandana. Not to get fisted, I don't think, but to wrap my history tighter around my neck. A large man sat beside me on the train, his face dimmed by tattoos, and said, take that shit right out your pocket. He was in a gain, I was not. He was gruff in a way that passes for mercy. I tossed the bandana out in the station's trash, carried on with my own dumb life. It was June. Fog hit each evening like a break wave, and I had never been brave. Thank you.